Uh, so welcome to our spring open house. Uh, this is the protection, protection, security and investigation custom border services, private security investigations information session. Um, so my name is Dana Brown. I am a student experience coordinator and I'll be your moderator for today's session. Um, we also have um, Sid Sony from the International Department to answer any questions specifically if you're an international student. And we have John Bauer, um, Bauer from the, he's a coordinator for this program. Um, and we might be joined by some faculty as well. So just kind of a breakdown of what we're doing today. It's kind of on the slide there. Um, we've got the admission deadline. We have lots of programs that are still open for fall and spring. Um, you can ask your questions in the chat or the Q&A box down below. And if they're program related, we'll wait till John's done presenting and then we'll ask him the questions. Um, and then if they're just related about anything, either Sid or I will answer them as we go. But ask all the questions that you want in the chat um, or the Q&A and at the end we can even like put your mic on and you can answer or you can ask them like that. Um, and there's lots of other things going on today if you want questions about other things beyond just this program. Um, and everything will be available online after the event if you want to check in another day. And um, yeah, so I think we'll leave it to John. I'm just going to give you the power of the um, presentation. Um, and we just have a little update on the fall term uh, before we start too. Obviously that's what everyone is wanting to know, um, but essentially we still don't know what's gonna happen, but whatever you know, public health regulates is what we're gonna do. So we are lucky to have some of our students on campus um, in a hybrid mode now. So we're hoping for that for the fall, but really there's so much that can happen between then. So we're very hopeful. Um, so just keep updated by visiting the website and we're gonna hope for the best here. All right. Um, oh, we have another person. Yay, welcome Sophia. So John, um, we'll, we'll let you start it off. Well, thank you, Dana. So, well, first of all, uh, I should introduce myself. So I'm John Bauer. I'm a professor within the Justice Studies Department of Niagara College, and I've been uh, at Niagara College for the last four years. I'm also the coordinator of this uh, particular program. So, uh, my job is to ensure that uh, you have uh, a good experience with this program. And, and right now, I'm going to be describing what this uh, program provides for you. Um, just before I do that, though, what I'm going to say is that in terms of uh, my background is that before I became a professor at Niagara College, I worked for the federal government in a number of different capacities um, over a 20 year span. The, uh, last organization that I worked with is the Canada Border Services Agency in various capacities as a border services officer, as an uh, investigator, and most notably as an intelligence analyst for the department. I also worked for Global Affairs Canada and the Department of Immigration. So um, the, the strength of my background is actually within uh, immigration law itself, but I have a lot of other interests as well, and in particular, uh, the psychology law enforcement relationship, and you'll see how that goes into uh, many of our programs. But getting back to the protection security uh, and investigation program at Niagara College, so obviously you're joining in here because you're interested in a law enforcement career. And the first thing that I have to say uh, in particular about uh, border services is that the main agency obviously is the Canada Border Services Agency. Um, right now, um, it is one of the largest uh, federal law enforcement agencies that we have in Canada, only rivaled by the RCMP. So there are thousands of uh, people that work for the CBSA in various capacities, but obviously your immediate interest is in our border services. But um, during the Q&A uh, in particular, um, if you have any questions about joining the agency and the other number of other opportunities there, I can certainly answer them for you. In terms of the law enforcement um, uh, work, 
as a career. Um, it really is uh, a unique and a very exciting uh, type of employment. Um, every day uh, is different. Um, I can certainly say from my own experiences, no two days uh, of my work were ever the same. And that for me was probably one of the greatest um, uh, attractions to that type of work. Um, also, uh, it is uh, attracts people from different types of backgrounds. One of the other parts of uh, being part of this organization was the fact that um, there were so many people with many different backgrounds and attitudes that came together and worked together, which made it an even more exciting uh, work atmosphere. Uh, and that's not to say it's not challenging. It is challenging, even though that there's a number of different opportunities, uh, not only in CDSA, but in many other law enforcement agencies. Um, the selection process can be arduous, but what we're going to be seeing here as part of Niagara College's program is that it makes you the best candidate, both from the academic standpoint and from the physical standpoint. We're actually uh, a testing center for the standard physical requirements for all law enforcement agencies in Canada. And also we uh, provide you with firearms training as well. Um, that's important, particularly if you have had no experience with firearms uh, either, because it can be a very intimidating issue. And if you could progress to the next screen, please. Thank you. So protection, security, investigation. So this is one of the programs within the uh, Justice Studies Department. We also have uh, police foundations and an advanced certificate program as well, where there's uh, ongoing uh, uh, open house sessions here today as well. So the protection, security, investigation diploma, it's two years, which is, translates to 16 months. And the admission requirements you can see here on, on the presentation pane is that you would require an Ontario secondary school diploma or an equivalent. And we would, one of the admission requirements is any grade 12 C or U standard English course. But what we also recommend as part of the program is that you take um, any of these available courses for you while you're still in high school, such as Aboriginal beliefs, Canadian politics and citizenship, challenge and change in society, introduction to anthropology, psychology and sociology, and understanding Canadian law. Um, even though um, the college atmosphere is a very relational meaning, there's a lot of um, experiential learning, learning by hand, there's still a strong academic component. As I was uh, speaking with uh, my colleagues just before you signed on, um, uh, the law enforcement environment is a uh, very demanding of people. Um, there's a, a, a greater expectation uh, these days from law enforcement officials, no matter what agency that they work for, both from uh, uh, knowledge of their legal authorities to their soft skills as well. And that's what we try to emphasize a lot within our courses is that psychological dynamic between yourself as the officer or the potential officer, people that you're dealing with, having a good understanding of how to deal with people under escalation tactics as well. When I put the rest of my presentation and show you exactly how we go about doing that, I think you will agree that there's uh, a good mixture of both academic and uh, experiential learning activities that's available at the college that you may not necessarily receive elsewhere. All right, Danny, if you could move on to the next one, please. One thing that you have to bear in mind, and in particular, what um, our associate dean, when he gives his speeches in uh, the fall and in the winter when he's welcoming new students into the college, is emphasizing your own personal background. Remember that uh, what you want to join in is a highly uh, respected and demanding, uh, almost paramilitary organization 
that has high expectations of your own behavior. So if you have something in your past uh, that relates to criminal charges and you haven't received um, what's, what's now called a record suspension in Canada, uh, you could face difficulty in some of the, the programs that we have at Niagara College and of course in future uh, employment within the agencies because there is a uh, significant background screening for uh, all people seeking law enforcement positions, obviously. In combination with that, and something that we emphasize a lot because of the amount of social media that people are involved in these days, if there's something on a social media account that you don't want your mother to see, it's probably a good idea right now to remove those particular issues because one of the major uh, background checks that all agencies do during your uh, selection process as a law enforcement official is examining your social media footprints and um, some negative uh, issues within that area can have an impact on your employability. So you might want to uh, consider your, your current behavior on social media and anything that may be controversial uh, in terms of uh, criminality if you do have it in your past, because it could have a subsequent impact on uh, some of the programs and some of the experiential learning activities that we have in our program, as well as your future employment in the law enforcement area. And if you could move on, please, Dan. So uh, a lot of the competency is something that Every law enforcement agency, where that happens to be the Canada Border Services Agency, the RCMP, the Ontario Provincial Police, uh, municipal police forces, uh, private security, private detection agencies, they all universally demand these competencies. And this is something that we help to encourage you during our academic and experiential learning processes. Reasoning skills, <clears throat> excuse me, writing skills, analytical thinking, and something that a lot of people don't think about when they think of uh, law enforcement uh, uh, jobs is client orientation. We mostly think of that in a, in a business environment, but actually there's a strong psychological dynamic between an officer and the person that you're dealing with. You're gonna be dealing with people from uh, various backgrounds, um, a number of different uh, attitudes towards law enforcement, uh, people who are compliant, people who will never be compliant, most people who are, are in between, a strong a sense of ethics, uh, obviously deal with difficult situations, decisiveness, self and inter uh, interactive communication. What you're gonna be seeing as part of the program and eventually when you start applying to enforcement agencies is that they actually have uh, quantifiable measures uh, of all these skills. What we help you to do is um, prepare for all that pen and paper testing and that physical testing that all law enforcement agencies demand. So when you come out of the program, everything that that law enforcement agency uh, expects of you in terms of your testing and, and your physical requirements, you've already gone through that. This is already um, old information to you and you're well prepared. So you're uh, the superior candidate to that person who just decided, I think I want a job in law enforcement, but I've never taken anything that really uh, relates to that background. So everything that I'm going to experience during that um, application process is brand new and very intimidating. Whereas you, as a graduate of this program, you're well prepared. You've already seen all these things, both from the academic standpoint um, and the experiential learning standpoint. All right, Dana, if you could move ahead to the next slide, please. So in terms of Niagara College itself, so again, just like um, the experiences that you'll be receiving as candidates in law enforcement uh, organizations, there's a, an academic component where you learn about uh, your authorities, statutory instruments, <clears throat> various relevant common laws. And there's, also, there's uh, uh, 
learning by doing experiential components. So the college has a lot of agreements with local service agencies where you can get practical experience in uh, various areas of law enforcement. Um, our hands-on experiential learning is through um, people who have trained uh, police officers, border services officers um, on the job. Many of our professors have also uh, taught at the Ontario Police College as well. So they're well acquainted with what the requirements and the expectations are of all the agencies and how uh, appropriate assessments are made. We also have a state-of-the-art uh, justice studies simulation lab where we have uh, dynamic uh, tactical situations where you actually engage with an instructor. Uh, it's not as in, probably not as intense um, when we come to uh, issues related to the use of force as you would uh, receive uh, uh, during physical training within the agencies themselves, but they're very much akin to those experiences, how to handcuff a person, how to, how to, how to deal with a non-compliant person, how to de-escalate a situation. Only do they have the physical contact. We also act with video uh, virtual reality simulations as well, where there's literally thousands of different types of scenarios of shoot or don't shoot, uh, people who are suicidal, and we're in a safe environment and then um, be able to de deconstruct all the actions and what happened during that experience. And that, we also have driving simulators as well. Um, the simulations that you receive at our college are virtually identical to the type of training that new officers, rookie officers receive uh, when they're accepted candidates into law enforcement agencies. So in addition to that, that you receive at our college to the type of training that new officers, rookie officers, law enforcement agents do, is that you're already well acquainted with all this, these tactics uh, and this knowledge before you even arrive as the um, officer trainee. So all, all that training you'll be receiving is that it just makes you uh, that much better of a candidate and more well prepared. We also have a, a physical abilities evaluation. Uh, many students find that challenging and it is uh, a challenge of physical demand. Again, no matter what agency you're going to, whether that's the uh, Canada Border Service Agency, uh, provincial and municipal uh, law enforcement agencies, private security, the physical demands are all the same. So um, all our people who are involved in stability, physical abilities evaluations are uh, certified in providing that testing. So Niagara College as mentioned before, they're actually a testing center for all law enforcement physical abilities training. So when you go through uh, this training, um, the instructors can actually provide you with any advice or further training to help um, better your physical condition to meet the requirements. And again, as I mentioned, we use the use of force training, uh, firearm safety, all are by certified our instructors and instructors who have been involved in um, preparation of officer trainees in various different uh, law enforcement agencies. Also, what you should know as well, and I guess part of our program, is that students who successfully complete the first year and have a first aid course, you can actually are, uh, write the Ontario Security Guard licensing exam. So in uh, Ontario and in other provinces, in order to work um, as, uh, in private security or a parapolice position or as a private detective, you have to be licensed. That means you have to go through a testing regime. We prepare for that as well, so you can actually walk out with those certifications as well, in addition to your diplomas, um, opening up uh, a number of different other areas that you may not have thought of uh, in terms of a uh, law enforcement career. In addition to that, as part of the academic classroom training, we have a number of different uh, workshops. Um, uh, we work closely with a lot of different law enforcement agencies, and in particular, the CBSA uh, locally here has become more and more involved um, in our program. Uh, we've had a number of different workshops related to uh, the use of force, um, uh, 
Um, you can speak one on one with a CVSA recruiter, applications are recruits, what you can expect, what the uh, anticipated number of officers that you're um, thinking of hiring. So, um, pretty much anything that you can imagine in terms of your preparation and knowledge for these types of jobs. We also have a, a number of guest speakers on various integrity law enforcement topics that um, add to the, the uh, academic program. And of course, we have a large uh, career services department at the college as well to help you with job assistance, um, how to apply, how to think that you can imagine in terms of me. And within our own program, specific to interviewing for law enforcement, because it is a bit of a different interviewing environment than another uh job categories so we have people help you um prepare for those interviews again just like your physical and academic parts uh we prepare you as well for what to expect during an interview for a law enforcement agency and if you can move ahead in thank you so uh, as part of the academic training. Right now we have, uh, well, we've always had a mixture of on-campus and hybrid learning. The, there was a, a much, there's a much greater emphasis on on-campus learning for our program because we like to mimic the law enforcement environment um, as much as we possibly can. One of those things is uh, camaraderie with your classmates and of course um, dealing with people on a regular basis. And there's uh, uh, certainly now with uh, the restrictions on COVID and a little bit more of an emphasis on virtual learning, we've really come to see the importance of that traditional classroom setting and that one-on-one -on -one interaction. So um, as Dana noted at the beginning here is that um, the setup in the fall for the college is going to depend on the situation, but we're very hopeful that in general, there's going to be a lot more on-campus activities, particularly as we progress through um, this pandemic crisis is very unusual. But at the same time, what we have to remember as well is that every college, every university, every secondary school, every primary school student is facing the same type of challenges while we progress through this. The advantage that we have with hybrid learning and uh, the way we've uh, uh, dealt with this particular issue is that you don't have to hold off on your career aspirations. A lot of students have opted uh, perhaps uh, to go to 12B or uh, to have a gap year and return back to when they think things are going to be 100% uh, normal. Not that there's anything wrong with that decision, but um, what I would say is that I, I wouldn't hold off on doing this because you're going to be receiving um, uh, an education that will further your expectations um, in the law enforcement field. And um, I think the way we've handled these particular issues in terms of hybrid learning and online learning, it's been a very dynamic situation um, as well, where we've uh, implemented a lot of tools that help a lot of people um, go through and be still be well prepared. And even though the, the physical environment for your physical testing might be a little bit different, there's a bit of an advantage because you're gonna be in much smaller groups. So the attention might be even that much more intense, which makes the learning experience that much better. So things that you learn in terms of technical knowledge are um, in our program is, uh, a broad overview of Canadian law and security. We look at a lot of private policing. There's been an explosion of private policing and parapolicing opportunities, not only in Canada, but in other countries as well. So um, <clears throat> oftentimes this is being seen as a, a secondary law enforcement job or a stepping stone to uh, other employment, but um, these types of jobs can be quite lucrative and very dynamic in the private sector. Um, uh, conflict management, management again, the, the, a greater emphasis on uh, the psychology of the um, law enforcement officer and the person that they're dealing with, um, emphasizing soft skills, how to handle a certain situation. And of course, um, physical fitness, 
in our particular program, in addition to um, laws and legal authorities dealing with the private policing sector, we also deal with immigration and customs laws as well, something that obviously is conducive to the knowledge of the Canada Border Services Officer, who has a number of different responsibilities, and of course, psychology and sociology. What we often uh, have uh, within our college is uh, what's called the Program Advisory Committee. So we have representatives from uh, various policing agencies, um, private security, private detectives, um, explain to us what they want to see in a candidate, what their expectations are, and how we can fulfill those expectations. So all of our uh, technical knowledge, physical conditioning, all those courses are geared towards what the industries and the agencies demand. And if you could just move on, please, Dana. Um, the other thing that you should know is that graduates are well regarded from uh, our program. Um, many of my first students have gained not only employment with the CBSA, but in uh, large private security agencies, some of gone on to be private detectives. Some of them have gone on to uh, other private security or parapolice jobs. Some have gotten um, jobs with uh, bylaw enforcement in other areas, sometimes um, other areas that people don't think of in terms of a law enforcement career. And these are just as some examples that you can see here on the presentation pane. Obviously, you want to be in this program because you're more interested in the the, the border services. And it is um, a, a very unique law enforcement agencies where there's a lot of different authorities that are separate and above from police. But um, I think what you should really take away from this is the fact that you're not pigeonholed into these particular areas, even though in your second year, you specialize in um, authorities and skills that are uh, reflective of the CBSA and private security, the skills that you learn are you really universal towards all law enforcement careers. So you're an eligible candidate for many different uh, agencies. And here's just a sampling of some of them. The uh, Canadian Air Transportation Security Authority. So these are the people that screen uh, people at airports for various reasons. Um, environment and climate change um, Canada. A lot of people don't know that uh, other government agencies within Canada have their own enforcement component that they don't necessarily equate with law enforcement, but they are. Here, they're enforcing environment, environmental laws. Employment and Social Development Canada, another agency within Canada that has an investigative component. Again, something that you don't think of as a law enforcement career, looking at um, employment compliance. Um, violations of labor laws, that sort of thing. Corrections Canada, uh, uh, Parks Canada, municipal and provincial law enforcement, bylaw enforcement, wildlife and conservation officers, bailiffs. So um, really, there's a much wider um, area that's available to you, even though we call this program um, security investigation customs border services and private security, you're not limited. You have a number of other different opportunities and we give you um, skills in order to obtain employment in those areas. And of course, a private security and a private investigator. And if you could just move on to the next page, please, Dana. Also part of that, um, you meet the, uh, normal requirements for all law enforcement agencies from this program. But also remember that this also gives you a foundation to further your education if you wish to do so. Um, we have our own graduate certificate program in law enforcement, which is quite intense uh, another year. And it's very well regarded within a number of different police agencies, not only in Ontario, but elsewhere. And um, also in areas of criminology, psychology, um, uh, administration of law enforcement agencies, sociology, and law. So not only do we provide you uh, the tools and abilities to become the best candidate in a law enforcement job, we also provide you with the foundational knowledge to advance your 
career if you decide that perhaps uh, you want to uh, further your knowledge and skills within Niagara College itself or at uh, other institutions. You want to move on, please, Dana? And thank you very much. That's the end of uh, my presentation. This is just a reminder of when you can uh, accept your uh, offers of admission and uh, some of the other issues that are available for you. And if you have any questions, I'm uh, glad to answer them. Thank you, John. I hope uh, everyone learned something. I sure did. And I worked at the college for five years and I want to take courses in this program now after listening. So we still have um, Bradley and Sophia here. So you guys have the floor if you wanna ask John um, or myself or Sid any questions um, about this program. You've got the coordinator here who can answer your questions. You can type it in the chat, the Q&A, or if you want me to unmute you, you have the power to speak on audio. Um, but this is your chance to ask some questions and we will answer to the best of our ability. And um, if not, you're free to go enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Oh, a question popped up. Okay. Is it a requirement to know French specifically for border services? Uh, no, it's not. There are some positions that there's uh, bilingual requirements are, are needed, but it's not necessarily imperative. Normally, it's noted on the, uh, the job posting notices. And in some areas of Canada, it's a more of an advantage to be bilingual. And actually, um, uh, the agency provides you with uh, language training. Um, if you have weak English skills, for example, they give you English language training. Uh, if your French language skills are poor, they give you French language training. And it, it could also lead to you being a certified bilingual officer, which gives you a little bit more pay, actually. So there's that opportunity to um, advance within the agency for that, but no, it's not a requirement to be fully bilingual. No. Oh, we got another one. Um, on the course outline, it lists specific requirements for uh, computer needs. What would you recommend? So, uh, you would you like me to answer? Yeah, I think I'm, I don't know if it's specific to your program. I know the general requirements, so I'll let you mm -hmm. go first. And then if there's anything else, I'll jump in. Yeah, okay, to, to, the, to the best of my knowledge, it's not that you need a high power computer like a, like a MacBook, but you have to have sufficient memory to handle uh, the virtual classes. So even if we, for example, in September, uh, a normal 100% uh, uh, on-campus course is now hybrid, uh, you'll need uh, reliable uh, internet connections, uh, camera, and um, all MS Word products. So uh, I believe that the college actually puts out uh, information on the computing power that you would not likely need, the memory capacity of the computer, but it's not an expectation where you have to um, uh, uh, Give, give away your firstborn in order to obtain the uh, requirements. Normally, uh, what I use is a standard uh, HP laptop that averages retail around $600 or so. Yeah, I'll just follow up on that. I think on the Niagara College website, it will tell you to get uh, a computer that has Windows 10 in it. Um, but that's just the best operating system for our programs, but everything else still works on, if you have Windows, whatever came before that, I can't even remember. Um, <laughs> but like John said, you really you need a connection to the internet is yeah. the main thing. You know, some students, it's not ideal, but do, do it work from their phones. It's not the best experience, but um, yeah, you don't need to go out and buy like a super expensive laptop. And the college does provide you with um, cloud Microsoft Office Suite. So um, you don't even have to go buy 
that program for your new laptop or if you have a desktop, um, you can just use it all on the cloud. You can also download one copy to a physical laptop or a computer. So it already comes with everything in there and um, all the other programs I think there have done that you can access it from your Niagara College account. So really just some type of computer device that works and the internet and you'll you'll be good but i know it does say on the website they want you to have like a windows 10 something but a lot of students don't so um the hp 600 one will work great any other questions i see a hand up Sophia, I'm gonna allow you to talk if you wanna talk on the mic. So go for it. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh yeah, hi everyone. So <laughs> I'm Sophia, I'm an international student and uh, I'm doing my application process through an agency. And they told me something like, when I graduate from this career, like I have to do like a general exam to be able to work in this area. I don't know if it's like something like that or. I can answer like, so if you take uh, certain programs, you know, uh, especially, you know, uh, say custom security or police foundations uh, as an international, uh, sometimes there might be a requirement for all these, you know, federal or provincial jobs that you have to be like a resident. But I have a lot of students, you know, uh, from, uh, you know, in my market, like so I manage Africa. And then before I used to manage India, like South Asia, uh, who just did their uh, private security exam later on. And they're all working in that field now. And they have completed this two year program, you know, and they took the speciality like the private security. So it might be if, if they're referring to some kind of exam, it might be the, some kind of licensing for the private security. Maybe John can uh, answer it better, uh, like the, in terms of you know certain exams what they have to take. Yeah, Sophia. So uh, I'm I'm going back to all my experiences as an immigration official, where I actually received the applications from uh, post secondary uh, students. Um, for um, border services of um, uh, provincial law enforcement or federal law enforcement. Um, we do give, give a disclaimer to international students that you actually have to be either a Canadian citizen or a Canadian permanent resident to be considered for those particular type of positions. However, the, the private security field or working as a private detective has no such uh, requirement and um, uh, some of the uh, immigration, refugees, and citizenship programs for uh, postgraduate employment um, had to be uh, adapted to meet the uh, more virtual uh, educational learning requirements that all college and university students had to receive because of COVID-19. Normally, uh, courses that are all virtual don't qualify for a post-second uh, postgraduate work permit, that those regulations have been adopted, recognizing the need for all educational institutions to adopt those particular types of learning. So you're eligible for that work permit after you graduate as well. Plus, we have uh, other opportunities within private security. But as Sid said, what uh, your uh, classmates are obviously referring to or what the agency is referring to is the licensing. So the testing for the licensing being uh, involved in those para-policing type of organizations, that's what they're referring to. Mm -hmm. And you're eligible to write that right after your first year. So you're prepared for that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I think that's it. So we'll end it now. Okay. And I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. And hopefully uh, we'll see you guys in September or eventually. And please do reach out um, in any of the ways we've said. If you have more questions, um, us and the rest of the team would love to help you in any way that we can.